Hi, my name is Sean Beasley, and today I want to show you how to install OTRS on a Windows machine. It doesn't matter whether it's Windows XP, Windows Server, Windows Server 2003, or Windows Server 2008. The install package is always the same, and the process is always the same. So we'll open it, we'll click Run, and then we'll wait for the setup to unpack all of the data. Then we'll have to choose our installation language which basically affects the language in which the licenses will be displayed. So we're going to choose English for this example, a little bit of an introduction, then come the license agreements for OTRS. as well as MySQL and Apache. And we'll choose our destination. We're going to leave it as default for this. Choose our program group. And then we're going to let the installer run. Like I said, this takes about five minutes. You're on the speed of your computer. Once this is done, you'll be presented with the option to continue with the web installer. The web installer can be used when you're going to connect to a MySQL database. <coughs> in this case, we have the MySQL database included in the package, which means we're going to go ahead and use the web installer to complete the installation. If at some point, or if during the installation, you decide to use another database backend, then you will choose not to use the web installer and then you must manually inject all of the SQL scripts that are used to create and insert the initial data and do the post data cleanup. You'll have to use these separately on the individual database that is going to be used. If you're using an Oracle, of course, you're going to need an Oracle client. And if you're using MS SQL or any other of the supported databases, then you'll just need the SQL statements or the SQL files as provided within the source code. These are located under the installation directory, under scripts, and then database. So here's our continue with web installer screen. We're going to leave the check mark box and click finish. Immediately the Internet Explorer or the browser of your choice, your default browser, will open. And then we'll be presented with the four steps of the web installer. The first step is just a well, not even a step, it's a welcome screen. So we'll click next. The first step is then officially the license agreement. And we'll accept the license here. Um, we have the opportunity to change the passwords uh, or to set the passwords. The admin user is root. The admin password, password, this is just for MySQL, is going to be empty unless you've set a password after the installer was finished or you're using a different host which has a admin password. Um, for our purposes, we have to leave it empty, otherwise the installation won't work. This is the database user. We can make this anything we want. So we're just going to use the user OTRS new. It's a good idea to do this and to create a database user that's individual to your system and not use the default password of hot, just for security reasons. The database name, it just depends on in which environment you're using this database, but we'll just leave it here, OTRS. As a standard, we have to uh, select here whether we want to use UTF-8 or if we want to use the default char set of the database uh, or another char set. We're going to go ahead and choose UTF-8 because it's secure for the future. And uh, we don't have a database, so we're going to click Create. If at any point you wanted to delete your database and start over, you can choose to delete it then click next, then go back and then recreate it using the web installer. But we're just going to choose to create it at this point. So let's click next. 
then we'll click next. Here we'll choose in the third screen our basic settings uh, such as system ID, uh, system FQDN, for example, localhost, an admin email, uh, an organization if we choose. We can choose our log module. For Windows, the only uh, applicable will be system file. The path has already been added by our installer. The default char set of the web front end will be UTF-8 because we created a UTF-8 database. The default language we'll leave is English and check MX record. MX records uh, will be checked before or when, when creating a, a ticket. Um, if you have a test system where you want to use uh, fake email addresses where no MX record is going to be valid in these, uh, for these email addresses, then go ahead and set this to no. We're going to leave it at yes. Click next. Now the last uh, step is just a presentation saying that we're finished. Uh, be careful. Here is the default user and the default password. This is the system user, the first user in the database, and this user will be used to do things like create tickets for the postmaster and things like that. Um, please be sure to change the password as soon as possible. You can even um, set this user to invalid <coughs> so that nobody can log on with him. It will not affect the functions of the OTRS as an application, but whatever you do, please change the password after you log in initially. So we're going to click on this link. We're going to choose rooted localhost. I've saved my password. Please don't do that. And we're going to click login. The first login is always going to take a little bit longer because it's generating the setups in the background for the sysconfig. And uh, that's why it will take a little bit longer to log in the first time. But as you see, it didn't take that long. And that's setting up OTRS for Windows. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any special needs about setting it up on Oracle or about setting it up with the IIS, maybe we will try and create some more. I will try and create some more videos in the future for these. But at this point, um, you can always turn to the mailing list. There's plenty of people that are willing to help you there. I uh, thank you for watching.